Okay, so most people have never actually met a true believer. Now, sure, we've read stories about believers, we know that true believers exist, but we hardly ever see them. Well, Be Holy is a podcast that shines a light on the behaviors, the mindset, and the duties of a believer, so that we can recognize God's children even when they don't look like God's children. Yeah, it's a bit of a process. Each lesson is given by our own Pastor Nard. Your sins have been forgiven. All you have to do is believe it, and God will help you through your journey. You've traveled long enough without Him. Today on Be Holy, we are talking about living under the law. And my question is, what is that? (laughs) Hey, listen, how's everybody feeling? How you feeling? How you feeling? As I said before, you know, this whole year is flying past us already. I can't keep up, but I'm not even going to try anymore. I'm just trying to stay saved. How about that? I'm trying to remain a believer and do what God says, regardless of what I think. Hmm, that's key. Always do what God says over what you think. And you'll be in a good light. Trust me. You'll be protected, regardless of what's happening to you. The whole world can come crashing down. But if you're doing what God says, regardless of what happens to you, you're protected by God himself. He has to protect you because... You're one of his children and you're believing. And even if you're not one of his children yet, you're trying to learn how to believe and trying to walk in this thing slowly because you've been hurt by many other religions, many other faiths and whatnot. But now you've decided to, well, I'm going to give God a try. Well, it's time to give God a try then. Give him a try. And so when you're doing this, you're actually walking in slow. You're you're apprehensive about what you're doing and who you're talking to and what you're listening to. But, you know. Try to hear what God says and tell him that you're only trying to hear him. And I'm tr- listen. He says, if you're if you're honest, he will answer. If you really want to know him and you're honest about it, sincere, he'll lead you to where you need to be. He will, regardless of what religion you're in, what church you belong to, what church you don't belong to, uh, whatever. Even if you're a Satanist, you follow what I'm saying? You can be agnostic. You can be a, a, you can say that there is no God. Okay, fine, fine, fine. But if you're sincere about what you believe, if you're sincere about it, God will guide you back to where you're supposed to be. He will. And maybe you've never seen it before. Maybe you've never been a part of it, right? But he will guide you to where you're supposed to be. Now, today we're talking about this thing called the law. The law was the orders of God. You know, basically, he he gave us a list of rules. Well, not necessarily even rules. They were just things that he had an issue with. You know, he has an issue with us lying to each other. He has an issue with us mistreating each other. He has an issue with that. And so he made known to us all the issues. Well, not maybe not all of them. Just listen, he made enough of them known to us. (laughs) <laughs> to where we can live right and treat each other right So he made those things known to us By writing them in a book And preserved the book from years past So that we could read them in today he, he just set it up for us He's always looked out for people Who really wanted to know him And he always has a witness Always has one So it's written and he has witnesses So <laughs> you can't get around it now this law uh it takes a turn sometimes you know it feels good when we can quote the law we thou shall not this and thou shall not that and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't and you should be this and you should be that and this is what god is looking at and you should do this it feels good to know those things right <clears throat> it feels good to know those things and it, it really feels good to even say them but here's the here's the thing the law won't save you. Mm. The law won't save you. I told the church last week, even the Bible won't save you. The Bible is actually for correction, uh, faith. It shows you what to do, how to do it, but it won't save you. Now, some people say, oh, no, you're blaspheming. No, listen to what I'm telling you. The Bible can't save you. Only Jesus can save you. Now, if Jesus is the one who's doing the saving, Right? He's the only Savior. No book can save you. No preacher can save you. Only God can save you. And He knew that. And that's why He set this whole thing up. So He told us what He had a problem with. 
And then he showed us, I'm going to save you anyway, though. But understand that these are the things that I have a problem with. And you obeying those things are not going to save you. Only I can save you. Now, you doing those things shows a good conscience towards me. It shows me that you're really conscious about uh, what I have a problem with or my uh, my will for people. You know, you if you see what God's will is for people and you don't step in the way of that will, you don't want to mess up that will. You, you, you do what needs to be done. God will bless you. He will. I mean, we can get into some really, really deep things that God has problem with. You know, we could, we could start talking about uh, uh, sex before marriage or whatever. Right. God has a problem with that. Even though it feels natural to do, he still has a problem with it because not a problem with sex, but a problem with when you have sex. So sex after you're married is fine. But sex before you get married is not fine. You get what I'm saying? And so when you realize that you don't want to mess up the other person that you're sleeping with because that's treating them wrong. So you try to stay away from it as much as you possibly can. And so God sees that. And so now you're applying the law, not just reading it. You kind of get what I'm saying? So we're going to read this here. Let's read. Romans. Romans uh, chapter seven. Romans chapter seven. We'll start verse number one. And it'll talk about uh, the law. Now, it's going to mention something in here about marriage and adultery and all that. We're not talking about that. And matter of fact, the verse itself isn't talking about that. It's giving you an, an example of how to apply what you know about God. So it says, verse number one, it says this. Now, dear brothers and sisters, you are familiar with the law. Don't you know that the law applies only while a person is living? It only applies when a person is living. Listen to that. For example, when a woman marries a, uh, a man, the law binds her to her husband as long as he's living. But if he dies, the law of marriage is no longer applied to her. So as long as he's living, the marriage law is applied. But when he dies, she's free. Verse number three. So while her husband is alive, she would be committing adultery if she married another man. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law that does not commit Oh, wait a minute. She's free from the law and does not commit adultery. There it goes. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law and does not commit adultery when she remarries. Get it? So the law only applies to while you're living, but when it when you die, now you're free from it, right? So here comes verse number four. So my brothers and sisters. This is the point. See, I'm telling you, when the marriage and the, the uh, adultery wasn't the point. This is the point. You died to the power of the law when you died with Christ. So when you took on Christ, you died from the power of the law. Hmm. And you, I know you're under, wondering, what is the power of the law? We'll see it in a second. You died to the power of the law when you died with Christ. And now you are united with the one who was raised from the dead. You're united with Christ when you put down the law. So once you died to yourself and you died to uh, the law, you died to the law when you died with Christ. So that's what the baptism represents. You go down to the water and you're baptized and you leave the old you in the water. The new you comes up out of the water. And so now you are united with the one who was raised from the dead. As a result, we can produce as a result, we can produce a harvest of good deeds for God. That's a result. That's a result. Us dying to ourselves and raising with Christ or, or, or leaving our old selves behind and taking on the new self, right? As a result, we can produce a harvest of good deeds for God. For you, no. For God, not for you. For God. Not for other people, but for God. Okay? Because it's all about Him. It's not about us. He just wrote those laws so that we'll understand what He has a problem with and what His will is, right? So, if we just... Follow what he says. We'll know what this means. Now, verse number five says this. When we were controlled by our old nature, sinful desires were at work within us. When you were controlled by the old you, all the sin was, con it was, it was, how can I say it? I'll just read it again. When we were controlled by our old nature, sinful desires were at work within us. The sin was already working in you and me. 
and the law aroused these evil desires. So when you heard the law, it aroused the evil desires. That's the power we were talking about earlier when you said, uh, what's the power? Um, <laughs> yeah, when you want to know what the power of the law is, there it is. When you hear it, you automatically think sin. You automatically want to get involved in sin. So God can say, don't do this and don't do that. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't this. And you immediately want to run out there and steal and lie because you heard it. And that's the power of the law. Hmm. You have to read chapter eight to find out the other part of it. But it says this, uh, the law aroused these evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds resulting in death. So the very thing that was supposed to help us, it aroused something in us that didn't help us. So when people say, oh, you got to obey, you got to obey the laws, the, the laws, are all the laws of God. You, listen, can't nobody do that. Nobody can do it because as soon as it tells you not to do it, you run out and do it. You understand? But if you understand that God has a problem with those things and you realize that you are no longer under the power of the law, then you can withstand those sins. You can stand away from those sins. You can stay away from those sins. Verse number six is this. But now we have been released from the law, for we died to it and are no longer captive to its power, the power to make a sin. That's what the law did. It did. It told us what God thought. But it's something within us that just wanted to rise up and try those things. Remember how you, your mom used to tell you, don't touch the stove. Don't t do not do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. And you immediately wanted to run out there and do it. That was called the power of sin. That was the power. You knew what the sin was and they told you what not to do, but something in you wanted to try it. Mm. Now we can serve God, not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, but in the new way of living in the spirit, living in the spirit is resisting sin. And so when you realize that God has a problem with this thing hmm, or that thing or that sin or that sinful suggestion or the evil that is around us and that's just growing. In, see, now you don't have to live by that. Now you can live by the spirit. When you live in the spirit, you're alive and you no longer have to give in to those things that you know are wrong or even the things that you don't know are wrong. Hmm. Ask God to help you and live in the spirit. Well, how did you feel about today's lesson? Speak with us at Beholy116 at gmail.com. Share Beholy with a friend, a colleague or someone who needs it. Connect with us today at BeHoly116 at gmail.com. Your support of BeHoly is greatly appreciated. Simply text the word GIFT to 614-363-6133. And if you're ever in Columbus, Ohio, give us a visit. Come visit us. Brought to you by the First Church of Christ Apostolic Way, a small church with a big heart.